god, guys! Holy crap, this is so awesome. I mean, I get excited pretty easy, but I am blown away. It's physics, math, and engineering. Machine it, draft it, build it, test it, break it. Every time something new gets built, the entire world advances. Laying in bed at night, it's designing new parts, designing new suspension, designing new wings, designing new wings, designing new wings. All right, guys, this is the third spar of three, two for the airplane, one to bend and break. Now, I already have a really good idea of what this is gonna turn out like because the numbers between SOLIDWORKS FEA, which is finite element analysis, and what our test structural failure in the previous video did was so close, it was within a percent or two. And on this one, we actually did an analysis to see if I could put holes in it to lighten it up. Scrappy spar is so oversized. I needed it for the loads I'm gonna put on it, but I wanted to find out if I could strip some weight. We put some holes down it, and we, we were about a 5% loss in the total structural load, which would have made no difference because I can't get enough weight in the plane to affect that. However, by just changing a few things, which was pulling the holes a little further away from the stress point of the strut and right at the end bracket, shrinking those holes a little bit more, but out from the strut outward, we were able to start small and grow as we went out to the tip where there isn't low, heavy loads we pulled out a lot of weight and got within 1% of the original structural load and eliminated the weight. So uh, we'll pull it and break it later, but we're gonna keep going ahead. You can see my strut attack point there, some of the brackets right there. But for fun, there's a couple weird holes in here you're gonna see. You'll find out what those are all for really soon. But this set right here, I think some of you might guess what those oval holes are for, but this set's gonna be a tough one. And I'm just curious, Throw me out some ideas what you think these funny shaped holes are right here. I'm doing something different that I've never whispered about at all. And I'm just curious if someone can guess it. And if you have no idea, throw out just crazy ideas. I love your comments, they're the best. I need to get back to work. <laughs>
Uh, I know that comment was out of love and concern and just making sure we're trying to follow all of it. And all of you who have comments like that, please send them my way. I love to talk about them. I love to address them because if I haven't talked about it in a video, I want to talk about it. And you know what? If I've missed something, I want to hear it. So let's go ahead and talk about some of those questions and concerns and I'll show you what we've done. First off, let me show you some of the designs out there and then what I'm doing a little different. Here's a traditional, it's uh, still used today. It's just everything is horizontal, horizontal and vertical. This absolutely works great, but I kind of wanted to show you this design and then show you what's being done different. Um, this is not built like a truss or a bridge. Really, all the loads are pretty evenly distributed with air. You don't get really high point loads. If this were a bridge and you were to span it like this and put a lot of pressure, this thing would collapse inward. But a wing doesn't necessarily do that. And so this saves a lot of weight. It's cheaper. It's easier to design and build. So this is one method. We're starting to see more and more of this. This is a certified aircraft rib out of a carbon cup. What I love about this is though they did add some weight, it actually is becoming a truss web. There's a couple reasons for that, even though it's not completely necessary. As soon as they started to go any higher and higher gross weights on their aircraft and their new certified airplanes, they found that this one, not only does it handle distributed point loads better, essentially imagine the one spars here, one spars here. There's another piece that continues on both ends. As you go to put load on this, this acts as a bridge or a truss in a house or a truss uh, trellis for trains. This is a really typical web. It does add more weight. We've now got cross braces in it, but it does do great things. If you have a fabric wing and someone gets up there and they run their hand across and they're trying to prop for fuel or do something on the plane or service, and they get up and they put their hand on this truss web distributes that 200 pounds on this little thin internal rib so much better that it's just a little safer for that, but it also is structurally a stronger web. So they've elected to go to a truss web. Now on Scrappy, I have to go to a truss web. I am wanting to do something a little more. I'm really excited about it. So here is a Scrappy. It is mirroring a truss web design. Now, I wouldn't have to do all of the ribs, um, internal or truss web design, but there's several points along my entire wing that I'm adding in beds for heavy point loading options to hang really big, heavy things off the wing if I want to. Some of those are things like mountain bikes, one wheels, all kinds of attachment brackets. So I wanted to make sure that if I point loaded here, or here or here, I don't rip the bottom of a horizontal member out of my plane. If you look close, you can see one spar there, one spar there. Those are the loads carrying between the spars. And now I have strong point loads at these key locations. So on Strappy, I am building a extremely strong bracket for holding my mountain bike and even more so an electric mountain bike because I'm 50. <laughs> You're so old. And so I want to be able to put mountain bikes on either side and I want to be able to have whatever weight out there possible. So to be able to handle a mountain bike, that's one thing, call it 25 pounds. To be able to handle an extra battery capacity mountain bike that's an electric mountain bike, now we're talking about 80 pounds, maybe even 100 pounds. Now a 25 pound mountain bike on a 4G or 5G bump, 125 pound load, ultimate load distributed out off the two tires or however you mount it. An electric mountain bike, that's a whole nother level of engineering to be able to handle the amount of Gs I've rated Scrappy for, valves turbulence, plus safety factor of another 1.5 beyond whatever I add for my own safety margin. That is why I'm doing a truss web. So let's kind of go into some of the connection points I talked about. Some of the people had questions on, you know, 
What kind of connections are you doing? Now on the airframe, I've already beefed those up and went over the top. So we went back through that in old videos, you can go find that. But I kind of want to show you this bracket and this bracket are the connection brackets that go back and bolt into the main spars of Scrappy, the oversized spars. We'll show those, but these bolt on at the hinge point. And to give you an idea, this is a certified bracket. So this is that replacement right there. I couldn't do this, and this is actually certified. It's strong, it's absolutely unbelievable. And what I really love about this is lightweight. But when I did the stress loads of the higher G ratings I want on Scrappy and the weight and everything else, I couldn't do that. So obviously we went bigger spars and bigger attach points. So we just got these machines, we're gonna go install them. Things like the jury strut brackets, need to be upsized, and the attach point of the spars themselves. So this is a certified attach point. This is Cub Crafters, and I gotta tell you, I did some studies on this. Cub Crafters, you guys rock. The Carbon Cub, um, those engineers are impressive. They build some of the strongest stuff I've ever seen, so well engineered and really lightweight. I would have loved to have used this bracket. I have a lot of faith in it. However, um, I'm twice the weight and I'm gonna go some higher G loading ratings and other things. So this kind of gives you a comparison. I went ahead and did a similar design. This is spun around backwards, but this gives you an idea of Scrappy's rear spar attachment bracket and the front spar attachment bracket. Very similar in design, but you can see how much different and far apart these connection points are because my spar is so large. But one of the things I did while I was at it, it was a little more work. You can see if I go real close right here, I have gone in and machined this out. It's called surfacing when it's a funny angle like that. But I took one of the pulleys and I pulled it up into the wing and I just went ahead and utilized the bracket to put in a pulley mount. Real quick, I just want to show you the simplest little part that was really cool. We just drew it up on the computer, laser cut it, bent it, rivet it, and you can see how tight the tolerance is on that. This is just one of my cables. Now, the reason I went ahead and made my own, you can buy them, but they don't come in all the right degrees. For example, the cable comes in, this strap and this strap is the maximum angle that the cable is going to reach and you want to grab it there so the cable can't jump out. So I found a lot that were a 45 or a 90 and I went ahead and just went through the whole aircraft since we drew all the cables in the entire plane and all the wings. Everywhere a cable made a turn, we just made our own version so we could get a five degree offset instead of having only one location and some of them are chasing steep the other way. A little bending, a little bit of rivets, I'm happy about it. Back to work. I hope that helps you see kind of the differences. Now I want to show you one of the things I'm most excited about is how I will attach my mountain bike to Scrappy. Now I've got this. This is not actually the, the rib that is going to hold the mountain bike and other accessory frame rail I'm putting on Scrappy. Um, it's much bigger, it's much thicker. I'm putting a really heavy load limit capacity, obviously. You got to match the loads on both sides. So um, 
You can't just throw 100 pounds on one side and none on the other, but I'll go through that math later and I'll get all those set in place. But this part was kind of a real pain to machine. Those of you who do machining will appreciate this. It looks real simple, really basic, but it's got one continuous curve. So if you machine it, you can set a big block of aluminum on a table and then you can get this curve and this curve but then you got to mount it on one continuous curve that matches the wing. This goes this way. And then you got to machine pockets and inserts. But then it sucks even more because then we start doing surfacing in here. This is a mini I-beam with my tie down points to tie down the airplane in the wind because it's the strongest point. This where the the brackets, when they're put through, pass through. The strut brackets come up through here. So where this bolt is, is directly my front and rear struts, the strongest part of the wing. It's where my strongest extra heavy duty rib is that's designed for it. And then I'm going to attach this all the way down the skin of the wing to the heavy duty reinforced rib that is a truss web. web and then the only thing I needed to do to be able to not have a lower weight limit here versus directly in line with a main pickup point of the truss is I had to engineer its own mini I-beam. And the purpose of this I-beam and why it's so thick here and here and this web in the middle is it is designed to span the gap from the extra heavy point load capacity. So when I attach this, they will become attached slide that forward there you go they become attached and then once they're permanently attached this beam becomes the com combined of the two they're fully connected of course it's even thicker and now i can pick a point load that's here i don't have to pick a point load that's here i just didn't want to have to think about where's the point that i could hang any amount of weight so now what i've done is i've taken this bracket that chases the shape of the wing and I'm making slide billet aluminum miscellaneous attach points so I could carry guns, one wheels, mountain bikes, a huge fuel pod if I wanted to go over the ocean sometime. I'm basically designing this to handle any amount of weight or any kind of future attachment and not limit myself where I can hang it because if I did some kind of frame like this, I'd rip it in half. So anyway, um, gosh, that's a lot of talking. I'm really excited. Let's go put this all together on the aircraft. We're gonna see what it looks like. We're only gonna throw in three ribs, this bracket, all these brackets, and I wanna see what Scrappy looks like for the first time with spars attached. Make sure that everything we did on the computer works, and I hope it does, because some of that geometry going from a frame out and everything else and twist, um, gets tough and there's lots of places you could mess up on inputting numbers on a computer so if it works we'll then take it all back off the plane start sliding ribs on our spars and building the wing officially so ah, you guys know the drill <laughs> I'm not excited let's get to work <laughs> I mean, I get excited pretty easy, but I am blown away. So this is the first trial fit. We didn't have to ream anything, adjust anything. A light rubber mallet, everything slid into every socket, every place. There was no adjustments on any ball ends or connection points. It literally just bolted up, no play. 
holy crap, it's the first time the wing's been up. So at this point, I'm completely confident pulling it all down and throwing these skins on and knowing it's just gonna bolt right up with no adjustments. So, holy crap, literally the twist in the wing designed on the computer, all the connection points designed on the computer, what we do on the table, it just went on. It, I really kind of expected some fine tuning. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm excited. We got the bike rack mount up there. My multi accessory adaption plate is in. Every bolt just tapped right in. Um, I can't wait to hang a bunch of stuff off that and go play in the backcountry. Back to work.